Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and allows us to continue bringing you awesome content. So grab your favorite snack, get comfortable, and let's dive right in. Thanks for joining us. As I sit here, the weight of my past still clings to me, heavy and unyielding. My name, once a marker of who I was, has now become a symbol of my transformation and turmoil. It all began with a deception that spiraled out of control, leading to my forced feminization and kidnapping, an ordeal that marks every moment of my waking life. John and Mike, my two steadfast friends, were the only ones who stood by me through the darkest times. Together, we've shared not just memories, but the kind of loyalty that's forged in fire. They knew the full extent of my suffering, the deep scars etched not just on my body, but my soul. Our bond, cemented in shared outrage, turned towards those responsible for my torment. It wasn't just about revenge, it was about reclaiming our lives and ensuring no one else would endure such pain. We were united in our mission, our anger fueling late-night discussions of how we would dismantle the lives of those who had so carelessly toyed with ours. As we plotted our vengeance, I couldn't help but feel the pull of conflicting emotions. The desire for justice, or was it revenge, was tangled with a fear of what we might become in our quest. But every time I looked in the mirror, the reflection that stared back only hardened my resolve. This wasn't just for me. It was for every silent scream, every unheard plea for mercy. Thus began our journey, not just for retribution, but for redemption. As we ventured deeper into our plan, the lines between right and wrong blurred, but our purpose never wavered. We were determined to right the wrongs done to us, no matter the cost. With the bitter taste of our past still fresh, John, Mike, and I began our campaign of intimidation. Late into the night, in the shadows of our dimly lit room, we crafted voicemails laced with venom, each word a dagger meant to strike fear. You won't be working our streets any longer, we whispered into the phone our voices cold and unyielding. Your time is up, we continued, the threat hanging in the air like a noose. Sending these voicemails felt like casting stones into the dark waters of revenge. Each message was a step further away from who we had been and closer to the Avengers we were becoming. As we pressed send, a sinister satisfaction washed over us, but it was quickly chased by the creeping dread of the unknown. What were we turning into? Yet the memories of our suffering pushed these doubts to the back of our minds, fueling our resolve. We were not just reclaiming our lives, we were asserting our dominance over those who had tried to destroy us. As our plan thickened like the darkening evening shadows, John, Mike, and I escalated our tactics. Night after night, we donned the cloak of darkness, our presence mere whispers on the wind as we trailed the girls. Our steps were silent, but loaded with intent, as we followed them from the neon-lit corners where they worked to the sanctity of their homes. This stalking wasn't just about intimidation, it was a psychological warfare, designed to unsettle and unnerve. We watched from afar, blending into the background, our eyes tracking every move they made. The fear we instilled was palpable, a constant companion as they started looking over their shoulders, their nerves fraying at the edges. Each follow, each shadowed step home tightened the noose of fear around them, mirroring the suffocation we had felt during our ordeal. But with each passing night, the weight of what we were becoming grew heavier on our souls, a stark contrast to the adrenaline that pumped through our veins during the chase. It was a dark dance between the hunters and the haunted, and with each step, we were losing a piece of ourselves to the shadows. Fueled by a growing desperation and the dark thrill of our vendetta, John, Mike, and I made the decision to infiltrate the sanctum of our adversaries, their home. Under the cloak of night, masked in the anonymity of darkness, we broke through their defenses, our hearts pounding with adrenaline and a bitter sense of righteousness. Our aim was simple to shatter their world as they had ours, to tear through their possessions, to steal what they valued most. The air was thick with the tension of our mission as we stealthily moved through the shadows of their home. But our confidence shattered like glass when, instead of silence, we were met with the daunting presence of their protector, 
the girl's pimp, an imposing figure whose very size and demeanor screamed danger. There we were, caught in the act, the adrenaline of the break-in swiftly turning into a chilling fear. The tables turned in an instant. The hunter became the hunted. Our plan, so meticulously crafted, crumbled before our eyes as we stood frozen, confronted by a man whose mere presence was enough to instill primal fear. This wasn't just a setback. It was a palpable shift in power, a moment of reckoning that none of us were prepared for. In a chilling reversal of roles, the sudden emergence of the pimp transformed us from aggressors to captives. Overpowered by brute force, John, Mike, and I found ourselves bound and helpless, the cold restraints biting into our wrists as we were roughly subdued. Our earlier confidence evaporated into the stifling air of the pimp's domain, where we now sat as prisoners. Our plans dashed against the harsh reality of our predicament. The gravity of our situation sunk in, each moment drawing out like a torturous eternity. We were no longer in control, our fate hanging precariously in the balance, dictated by the whims of a man who had all the power. The irony of our desire for control, now turned against us, was a bitter pill to swallow. Fear, raw and consuming, coursed through us as we waited, uncertain of the consequences that awaited. The tables turned so completely, we could scarcely believe how quickly we had fallen. The cold, bleak basement where we were held became the stage for a cruel twist of fate. As the girls walked in and laid eyes upon us, bound and vulnerable, a wicked delight sparked in their eyes. They saw not just their captors subdued, but an opportunity, a chance to mock the venom we had spewed, turning our threats into their perverse form of retribution. Their laughter cut through the silence, chilling and sharp. With mocking tones, they recounted our threats back to us, but with a twist. They decided to transform us into the very image we despised, to make us embody the life we had scorned. This wasn't just payback, it was a cruel irony, a way to humble us completely. As they untied us only to lead us to their prepared chamber of transformation, the realization of our impending fate dawned on us. Fear mingled with humiliation as each step forward felt like a descent into a nightmarish reality we had never imagined. We were to be dressed, made up, and displayed, not as ourselves, but as the ladyboys they intended us to become. Each touch of makeup, each item of clothing forced upon us, stripped away pieces of our identity, leaving us exposed and diminished in a way fighting never could. Our descent into this surreal nightmare was marked by each layer of makeup and clothing applied to us. As the girls meticulously transformed each of us, I felt my sense of self eroding. Mike, with a grimace, was adorned in black lingerie and a denim skirt, a minimalistic yet foreign attire to his rugged nature. John, visibly struggling, was squeezed into a tight dress and high heels, his discomfort palpable. For me, the transformation was the most profound. Foundation, eyeliner, and lipstick were applied with an expertise that contrasted sharply with the mocking tones of the girls. A tight thong and corset-like bra constrained my body, a physical manifestation of the helplessness that had been forced upon us. As the tight red crop top was pulled over my head and the nylon surged up my legs, I could feel every shred of my previous identity slipping away. The final indignity was the black thigh-length high-heeled boots encasing my legs and completing the transformation. Each step I took was a reminder of how far we had fallen, from vengeful plotters to humiliated displays of revenge. As we navigated our unexpected new reality, the irony of our situation unfolded starkly before us. Once hunters, now the hunted, once dominators, now subjects of domination. The heavy makeup, the constricting clothes, and the high-heeled steps were daily reminders of our lost control. Amidst the lingering fear and constant humiliation, a profound realization dawned upon John, Mike, and myself. Our quest for vengeance had spiraled into a cycle of suffering, affecting not just us, but everyone entangled in this twisted plot. Reflecting on this journey, we recognized the destructive power of revenge, how it warps intentions and creates victims on all sides. This transformation, though forced and cruel, opened our eyes to the complexities of identity and retribution. In the quiet moments, away from the jeering crowds and harsh demands, we found a strange kinship in our shared fate, 
pondering the value of forgiveness over vengeance, pondering how different paths might have led to different ends. As we faced each day, the lines between punishment and protection blurred, leaving us to wonder if redemption was a possibility or if the cycle of vengeance would forever define our existences.